Welcome to this video about the system curve, which is needed for pump sizing. After you have watched this video, you will understand how the pipe size, the pipe material, and the roughness of the pipe influence the system curve. You will know how to calculate the pipe size and the flow velocity. You will be aware of the recommended pipe sizes for different wastewater systems. And you will know why the flow velocity is so important for the conditions of the wastewater system. I hope you'll enjoy it. So to make the system curve, which is needed for the pump sizing, we need to calculate the total head in the system. The total head is calculated by the geodetic head, HGEO, also called the static head, and the dynamic head. I have drawn a curve here with a system curve and a pump curve. And the geodetic head is characterized by the height between the pump and the sewage mains where the wastewater is transport transported to. We say that it's a constant. It can vary a little bit depending on the level in the lifting station or pumping station we, we are using. The slope of the system curve is the dynamic head, and that is a very uh, uh, varied value depending on the flow. So the dynamic head is influenced by the length of the pipe between the pump and the sewage mains. It's also influenced by the diameter of the pipe we have selected, the roughness of the surface of the inner pipe, and the fittings and valves mounted on this pipeline. Now I just want to comment on the dynamic head. The reason why the dynamic head varies according to the, the flow is due to the resistance in the pipe depending on the flow velocity. We'll look more into that uh, later in this video. So the first thing we will talk about when we talk about the system curve and the dynamic head is the pipe length. The pipe length is the distance between the pump, as you can see on the illustration, and to the discharge. It could be the, uh, the sewer mains or the rainwater uh, mains or a recipient. As mentioned, the pipe diameter influences the, the system curve, uh, the dynamic head. And uh, according to uh, EN 12050-1, we have some recommendations regarding the pipe diameter. It is recommended that the minimum DN32 is used for uh, installations where the discharge from toilet is not included. Uh, a minimum uh, pipe diameter of DN32 is recommended when you have a grinder pump and there you can discharge uh, wastewater from toilets. It is uh, recommended to use minimum DN80 when you discharge wastewater uh, including uh, discharge from, from toilets. So it's important to uh, look into these uh, diameters and recommendations because we want to uh, avoid that the system is clogging. What is important to mention is that the selected pipe diameter, the pipe size, uh, needs to be greater or equal to the discharge on the lifting station or on the pump uh, selected for the installation in order to have a, a flow and to avoid clogging in the system. When we talk about uh, the pipes and the uh, dynamic head, we also need to talk about the flow velocity. It's an, a very important uh, factor to look into when you uh, dimension the pipe system for, for a wastewater installation. And let me tell you why. Um, we have some recommendations regarding the velocity uh, for vertical pipes in the pit, uh, the recommended velocity is 1 to 3 
uh, meter per second. And for horizontal pipes in the ground, we recommend uh, 0 0.7 to uh, 2.3 meter per second. The reason why we recommend, or the standard uh, recommend, the 0 0.7 meter per second is that we want to avoid sedimentations uh, in the pipes, that solids will stay in the pipes and that can cause clogging uh, of the system. We also want to avoid that the velocity is too high, therefore the, the limitation is about 2.3 meter per second. The reason for that is that the wear of the, the pipes will increase when the velocity increase. You will have uh, more noise and also a very important issue, the economical uh, factor. Because when the, uh, the flow velocity is increased, you will also have increased friction and thereby you need a, a bigger pump to, to pump the flow. So, so from an economical point of view, uh, flow velocity should be kept below the 2.3 meter per second. So what I would like to add is that the 0 0.7 we also call the self cleaning velocity and that is of course because with this flow, you will clean the pipes from what could be contained in the wastewater of sand and particles and hair and, and so on. So now we'll dig a little bit more into the self-cleaning velocity. Um, when you need to have a, a flow velocity of 0 0.7 liter per second, it means that there are some required flows for the different pipe diameters and I have listed these uh, over here uh, to the right. For the DN32 pipe size the required flow is 0 0.6 liter per second when a flow velocity of 0 0.7 is required as a minimum and so forth uh, for the other pipe sizes. So what does that mean uh, when we look at the, the pump curve? It means that if you have a pipe size, let's select DN50, it means that at a flow of 1.4 liter per second, that here, it means that the set point of the pump must be to the right size of this borderline in order to uh, obtain the 0 0.7 meter per second of uh, velocity in the pipe. So the pump can actually uh, run at any duty point here, of course taking the efficiency and other factors into account. So it means that the uh, bigger pipe size you have, the borderline will move uh, further to the right. So if we, for example, uh, have an installation where the, the pipe diameter or the pipe size is DN80, the borderline will be further to the right. So we have that 3.5 meter per second for the DN80 pipe. And it means that the duty point when selecting the DN85 pipe must be uh, in this range of the pump curve. And now we will uh, make a calculation of the pipe size where we have a requirement of the 0 0.7 meter per second, the self-cleaning velocity. In this example, we have a required flow of 3.76 liter per second, and we will use this formula for calculating uh, the diameter. We use the formula with the area uh, equals to the flow divided by the velocity. When we have the area, we can further calculate the diameter. 
So we calculate uh, first the area of the pipe. We have a flow of 3.76 liter, liter per second. We need this uh, flow in cubic meter per second, so we divide by 1000. And then we get an area of 0 0.00537. Then we need to calculate the max pipe diameter. And we use uh, this formula here. And the max diameter which is allowed uh, for this installation is 0 0.083 meters. And that means that we need to select a DN80 pipe for this installation. And with this, we are sure that we will have uh, a flow velocity of 0 0.7 liter per second. So now continue with uh, the example. But now we will look into uh, what is actually the friction loss in this pipe. And uh, I will do that by means of a nomogram uh, based on the inner diameter, the flow, and the velocity in the pipe. We can, via the nomogram, find the friction loss uh, in Pascal per meter. So when you look at the diagram, first we have the inner diameter, and you find that on this scale. Then you find the flow of 3.76 liter per second. And last, the velocity of 0 0.7. And when you put your, uh, your ruler on this diagram, on, in these three points, you will find the friction loss uh, on the fourth uh, scale. So we can read the friction loss to be um, the 77 Pascal per meter. And it means that if we have a pipe length of 100 meter, we will have a friction loss of 7. 700 Pascal, which is equal to 0 0.8 meters. As mentioned earlier, the roughness of the surface of the inner pipe also have an influence on the on the system curve. It means that the roughness on this surface uh, have an influence on the friction loss uh, in the pipe. So with an increased roughness on the surface, the more friction loss you have. And if we look at a surface like this, you would have a ro high roughness factor. We, we call that factor K. Whereas if you have a surface like that, you will have a lower roughness uh, factor. You have different uh, roughness factors depending on the material of the pipe. If you have PVC uh, plastic pipes, you would have a lower roughness uh, factor compared to, for example, galvanized steel or uh, cast iron. Values for this uh, K factor can be found in, uh, in different tables on the internet or in technical booklets. And here we have shown an example of uh, different uh, roughness uh, factors we believe are uh, re realistic. When sizing the pump in, uh, in the Grundfos product center, there is a default value of the roughness factor of 0.25 but this value can be adjusted depending on if the pipes are uh, new or if they are old. It is a fact that the older the pipes are, the higher the roughness, because you can have deposit uh, 
corrosion uh, and sediments in the pipes and the roughness will be higher and thereby uh, the friction loss also. So let me show that on a curve. If we have a system curve here for the new pipe, we would have a system curve here for the old pipes. Because we have an increased uh, friction, uh, the curve will be moved upwards. Then I can also uh, put on a curve for the pump. In case we have a pump and that's aging, and you will have deposits and wear of that, you will have a, a new pump curve. So we started with a duty point here. And as the pipes get older and the pump get more worn, our duty point will move uh, to a new point. So that should also be taken into consideration when sizing that duty point will move uh, to the left uh, as time goes. The last thing I would like to mention uh, that influences the dynamic head and thereby the, the system curve is the friction loss in valves and uh, fittings. And uh, we have a formula uh, which looks like this for calculation of, of that uh, friction loss. When we calculate it, we need to sum up all the fittings and valves and find the zeta value, the resistance factor for the individual fittings and valves, multiply it with uh, the velocity and divide it by uh, the gravitation uh, constant uh, and multiply it by two. I'll not go into more details about that uh, calculation here. I can uh, refer you to uh, another video uh, about the calculation of the total head in the system where there will be examples of calculation of the friction loss in, uh, in fittings and valves. This value can of course also be calculated in Grundfos product center when sizing the wastewater products. Yeah. That was the end of the video about the system curve. Now you know what influences the system curve, that the pipe size, that the pipe material and the roughness of the pipes influence it. And you know what are the recommended pipe sizes for a wastewater system. You also know that the self-cleaning velocity is important to think about when you do the pipe sizing. So in general, the velocity and the pipes have an influence on the friction loss and thereby the economy of the installation. Thank you for your time.